Welcome YouTubers. So let's have a chat about BMSs. Let's have a look at the off the shelf products that you can buy for your e-bikes or your power walls or whatever you're building or your set of 18650s or pretty much any lithium battery. But also let's have a look at what I'm needing to do and to build for my power wall. Right, so let's have a look at a few topics. Now the first topic of them all really does have to be, do I need a BMS? Now the, to answer that question, and we can answer it in two different ways, so let's start off with a simple way. If we have a look at laptop batteries, power tool batteries, e-bike batteries, car ba uh, lithium car batteries, all those type of, all those products all come with BMSs. So your laptop battery with your six cells in it has a BMS. Your power tool battery has a BMS. Your um, e-bike battery also has a BMS. Now there's a reason why all those manufacturers of all those different components have put BMSs in them. And the simplest way to look at it is, is that if you want to create a battery and you want it to just be a, a plug-in and turn on or a charge and discharge and a, um, put it in the corner and forget about it, then you need a BMS. That's the simplest way to look at it. Uh, if, you, if we look a little bit more in depth, things get a little bit more complicated. And there's, a, there's obviously a few YouTubers out there or um, people that have said, no, you don't need a BMS. Well, it really depends on your situation. It's, it, it's not, there's no one answer that fits all. It's really, first of all, having a look at what are you currently doing? What are you building your battery for? Is it a small battery? How many cells has it got? Is it a large battery? In which case there's lots of cells in parallel and a few in series. You know, what's your situation and what are you building? Because do you need a BMS or not? Uh, simply, yes. Um, a more detailed answer is maybe not if your battery pack is potentially big enough. Um, so there's a whole range of different things or a whole range of different factors that come into it and um, that pretty much complicate it. So if you are a newbie, if you are um, thinking about uh, creating a battery for an inverter or creating a battery for your shed or, or creating a battery that you, that you want to give to your friend, um, the answer to do you need a BMS or not is probably yes because you wanted to create a product uh, or a, a battery that you can just plug in, discharge and charge, you don't have to know a lot about electronics, you don't have to know a lot about anything and it's, it'll just maintain itself. However, if you're wanting to, uh, if you're someone that knows a lot about electronics and you've got a lot of time to continuously invest in the battery, uh, remembering that once you build this, build, this, uh, build this battery, if you're needing to check on it every week or every few days or every month, then it's something that you're going to need to continuously do for the life of the battery. If you want to build a battery that you just put in the corner and you want it to manage itself and you just want to check up on it every month, then the answer to the BMS thing is yes, you probably do want a BMS. The other, the other really interesting thing, and I asked uh, one of the other YouTubers this the other day, and that's kind of why I brought this up, was if you were sick, or if you're going away on holiday, and you built a battery for your power wall, for example, or really anything, are you going to want to disconnect it when you go away? Are you going to have to disconnect it if you go away? Because you can't trust whether it's going to be okay. So when you're building a battery for a power wall or when you're building a battery for anything, you've really got to start with, is this going to be something that I'm going to continuously need and continuously want to spend more and more time on checking that it's okay? If the answer to that is yes, I don't care, it's just a small three or four cell thing, then that's fine. However, if it's a much bigger thing like a power wall or an e-bike battery or, or something else, you want to just be able to put it on the wall or whatever and forget about it and just check on it once a month. Now, um, one of the, the reason that, that really came up was one of the, uh, one, another YouTuber said that they're going away on holiday for a couple of weeks and they're going to turn their, um, their power wall off or their, their you know, different banks on their power wall. And the ones they're going to turn off was the ones with the, without the BMS. As a no noisy motorbike goes past. The, so, by turning those off, it obviously means that you don't trust it. And why would you if you've got nothing that's monitoring it and making sure that the cells are okay and nothing's going to overcharge and nothing's going to go crazy. So when we have a look at do we need a BMS or not, it really actually is a bigger question. It's a question of 
how many cells have you got? Is it something that um, you're going to be leaving for a long period of time? Is it something that you can leave for a long period of time? Um, for example, it's the it's Christmas time here, so do I if I go away next week, do I want to be able to leave my Powerwall on? The answer to that is yes. I don't want to be worrying about my Powerwall or my battery bank, whatever it is, continuously every day, making sure that something's not going to overcharge. Now it's the same with going away on holiday or if you're sick. For example, you it might be fine to build a, a, a battery pack and it's something that you use on a daily basis. But if you're sick for whatever reason, or if you have to go to hospital for a week or, or two, or who knows, then um, you need to have something that's, if it's going to be on all the time, you need, to, you need it to manage itself, rather than you continuously monitoring it and making sure that it's okay. And if it goes out of balance, then fixing it back up again. So the question to the BMS um, really comes down to um, what's your situation? How big is your pack? And how much, how much of it are you relying on? Now for a power wall, like with my project, um, I need it to, to be in the corner or to be in the garage. I need it to stay on, I need it to stay balanced, and I need it to be something that I'm not going to need to turn off if I go away, and it to be pretty much rock solid unless there's a fault, or unless it, something happens. So when I'm thinking about my power wall, I'm thinking more around let's create a system that's going to manage itself as much as it can without kind of going over the top. But let's have a, let's create a system that if I do go away for a couple of days, I'm not going to have to worry about it. So for me, having a BMS of some description is important. Having, balance, uh, having cells in balance is important. Now, the other key thing that we should think about is, so hopefully that's kind of answered the question around the BMS side of things. Um, the short answer really is, is that if you buy an off-the-shelf BMS, the cheap is anything anyway, get one with some LEDs on it so you can see that the cells are working, uh, so the balancing is working and that it's functional. Um, and keep it simple, but it, it's so cheap to put one on, you might as well. Now, another, I suppose, the, the next key thing is, is that, do I need a BMS if I've got lots and lots of cells? Now, if you've got lots of cells in parallel, the, what, with what, I found by looking at lots of YouTube channels and lots of videos on this type of thing is that the cells or the, the battery packs with lots of cells in parallel don't go out of balance as quickly as if the cells have only got two or three or four or eight or whatever in parallel. So if you've got a large battery bank and you've got a hundred cells in each pack, so let's just say hundred cells times seven, then you'll find that those battery, those those banks of cells in parallel won't go out of balance as quickly as if you had half as many cells. So if you had 50 cells in each bank. So the, the, the question I suppose comes around that if you've got large sets of cells, then they, will, they, won't, they, won't, um, um, they won't go out of balance as quickly as if you had small sets of cells. So that's possibly something to think about as well. And if you look at some big YouTubers, you'll find that they've got hundreds of cells in each bank, or each, sorry, each pack in parallel, and they don't differ, or they don't um, go out of balance as much as the smallest, uh, smaller groups. Now, that's fine, but they will go out of balance. They will eventually go out of balance. And the reason things go out of balance is they're not all the same capacity. So if you were to have, let's just say, seven groups of 100 cells, and you'll find that if you've taken them out of laptop batteries, you've discharged them, you've tested them, you've written your numbers on the side of them, or the capacity on the side of them, and you do your best using the online calculators to put them into perfect groups, and you sold them all up, you'll find that those numbers will change with how the cells change over time. So some cells will be newer, some cells will be older, um, they'll all differ and every cell within the different groups will all differ. So what you'll find is that they might not go out of balance as quickly, but they will drift from other groups. And that's just a, a normal thing that happens. So what you'd normally do is you'd have some kind of balancing going on so that as things kind of drift out of place, that they're, they're brought back into, um, into balance by the balancing circuits. So if you don't have a BMS and you don't have balancing, 
then those things will just continuously go out of balance. Now you, what you'll find is that they'll go out of balance quicker if you've got poor cells, older cells. They'll go out of balance quicker if you've got groups of larger capacity than other groups that are maybe lower capacity. So even if you've done your very best to try and get each bank say of 100 amp hours and maybe seven of those banks, then what you'll find is that each of those banks aren't exact. And because they're not exact and because the cells are a different age and they'll degrade in different ways, then you'll find that they will slowly go out of balance. Oh, slower than if you had a smaller set of um, cells, but they will eventually go out of balance. Now, if a cell goes out of balance, even by um, 100, milli, uh, 100 millivolts, the problem is, is that 100 millivolts at, so 4.2 volts is your, say, your maximum charge voltage. If you're out by 100 millivolts, what's that? That's 4.3. So now you're kind of getting into um, damaging territory and damaging the cells. If you're only charging to 4.1 volts and you're still out, you might be 4.1 volts, 4.12 volts, 4.15 volts, and then as you can see, you're slowly getting out of balance. Eventually what happens is that as you charge and then you discharge your cells, they will keep getting more and more and more out of balance. Now, depending on, again, depending on how many cells you've got in parallel will also depend on how quickly things might move out of balance, but it will happen. And the problem with not having a balancer, or not balancing at the same time, is that to, as they get out of balance, they'll get more and more out of balance, and then it's harder and harder to put them back into balance again. Or it takes longer to put them back into balance. So if you're thinking of a charge, if you're thinking of a, whether to have a BMS or not, or a BMS and balancer or not, the answer is that, to make it simple, the answer is yes, you should get a, um, a BMS with a balancer because that means that your cells will at least be as tight as possible in balance and if anything does go wrong then things will get turned off and it's a really small cost. The other things to, to have a think about is um, if you're not using a BMS you really need to be looking at those cells because it doesn't take very long and it might be a few days or it might be a few weeks as the cells slowly and, and surely go out of balance you'll find that they'll go lower in voltage and then they won't come up as high the next time they're charged and all the other cells will be slightly higher and that's really because if you're charging to say 54 volts or whatever your charge voltage is 27 volts or 12 volts or whatever it is it doesn't really matter what you'll find is that the cells that are um, lower capacity, the ones that are more out of balance, they'll stay lower in their charge. They might only charge to 4 volts, where your other cells have now got to 4.15 volts. Um, however, they, they, it might be the opposite. Some of the cells might get to 4.2 volts, and now you're over, your other one that's more out of balance has got to 4.3 volts. So there's a lot to, to have a think about. It's not really a one-stop answer. It's not really a, a, a quick, yes, you need a balancer, oh sorry, yes, you need a BMS, or you don't need a BMS. I think the answer realistically is that if you're someone that just wants to make a battery, um, put your, your cells together and build something, the answer really is that yes, get a BMS and make sure it's got a balance, and make sure it's got balancing function, the functionality with it. Now, a lot of them don't. There's a lot that do, but there's also a lot that don't. If you have a look at AliExpress or pretty much most online um, shops, eBay or whatever, you'll see that there is BMSs without balancing. So when you think about buying a BMS, make sure you get one that has balancing. Even if it's a small amount of balancing, at least it's going to be better than nothing. Now, I suppose that leads on to the next thing. Let's have a look at the off-the-shelf products that you can buy or off-the-shelf BMSs that you can buy. Now you can get two different types, you can get ones that use the same charge and discharge leads and you can get a different type where it's got the charge lead and the, and the discharge lead, the separate things. So just have a think about that before you buy it and that will depend on how you, what you're using your, your battery for and how it's connected to, to other bits and pieces. The other thing really is the charging current. That's a key thing to have a look at when you're, you're choosing an off the shelf product is that What's your charger? Is the charger a, a 5 amp charger or a 10 amp charger? Make sure you choose the BMS that's going to work best for your charging. It's the small details 
that define the product and it's the, it's the small details that you really need to look closely at. The other thing is the output, sorry, the output discharge current. So make sure you've got a BMS that's big enough to be able to handle the load that you're putting through it. So for an e-bike battery, you want to make sure that you have a high discharge current. For a power wall, it might be a lower discharge current. But whatever it is, check that on your BMS. Now the other key thing as I talked about before was the balancing current. If you buy an off the shelf BMS it's not going to have a fantastic um, balancing current but the higher the better. Now if you have a look at um, a lot of the, the ones on eBay and bits and pieces they're about 50 milli uh, milliamps of um, bleed current is called or it's called um, balance current. It, whatever it is it's the same type of thing. But it is also a very small amount of um, balance current. If you compare it to how your IMAX B6, for example, balances, compare that to this to the off-the-shelf um, BMS, you'll find that the off-the-shelf BMS does it um, a lot. It doesn't do it as well as your IMAX B6. So if you've got a large pack, then you obviously need a higher um, balance current to keep them all in balance. If you've got a small pack, then a, then a low um, balance current, it's not going to really matter. The other things to have a look at is the overcharge protection voltage and the over discharge protection voltage. So those are key things. The other thing is one of the other major things on the um, on the data sheets for these BMSs is make sure that the cell voltage that it reads is is within tolerance. So for example, some of them are 4.25, some of them are 4.2, and some of them are 4.2 plus and minus 2 to 5 percent. So that makes a big difference when you're you're charging your cell to 4.2. If it's got a tolerance of 5 percent, or if it's 2.4.25, uh, then you could hit potentially you could hit 4.3 volts. So these are the things to, to think about, and when you're choosing your BMS and you're, you're buying one that's kind of an off-the-shelf one, then try and find the best one that's going to meet your needs, but also with the lowest tolerances and the highest balance current. Now the other um, the other main thing to think about is it's worth spending a little bit more on a BMS with little LEDs on it, so that you can at least see if one it's doing its job. Um, compared to one that you can't see any noticeable difference whether it's balancing or whether it's not doing anything. So choose one with some LEDs, choose one so that you can um, visually see what it's doing and that'll make it easier and make you, that'll give you a little bit more comfort in, um, in the product itself and that it's doing the job. So now that's hopefully covered off a few things on the BMS. It's been a little bit long-winded but hopefully it's kind of answered a few different things. So realistically, um, the answer to the question, do I need a BMS? Yes, and if you do buy a BMS, um, just have a look at those things. Have a real good think about, I'll put that in the, show, in the notes to the video, um, what to have a look for. Um, but realistically, choose one that's, for, that's gonna work for your needs, but also have a real good think about what you're trying to design and what you're trying to do, and try and find a solution that's gonna work best.